Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole and welcome to week number two of the Alta Love Your Skin event. I assume most of you are here after having watched last week's week number one overview. If that is the case, know that again. There are timestamps in the description box below for each day that will be in the sale. There are also affiliate links if you would like to help support this channel. And if you are just stumbling upon this video, what I do in this series is share with you every item that is in the entire Alta Love Your Skin event by week. I do share with you the products that I have tried this week on a silver platter. <laughs> Too hard to resist that joke. You know, it's actually uh, quite a smaller selection for this week, but I'm not surprised, again, if you are a returning fan of the Alta Love Your Skin event. Week number two is typically the slowest week, I would say. Don't get me wrong, there's some hits coming up in this week, but I feel like overall Ulta kind of starts with a bang and then ends with their absolute best. So in my opinion, consistently, week number three in these sales, it's always the best. But again, you may not want to miss some of the items that are in this week. Uh, as always, I do encourage feedback. I love the feedback. I love reading all of your comments in the comment section below. And also, okay, before we get into the Alta stuff, if you don't like chats, please know you can jump right ahead to the next section. But can we please take a moment to talk about some unrelated to the beauty community drama? Don't worry, it's minor drama overall, but the Rolling Stone Top 200 Singers of All Time has apparently frustrated a lot of people, and that very much includes my family. Oh my goodness. Oh my, how do you all feel about it? The day this came out, my mom and I, my mom and I were texting each other back and forth. And you have to know, my mom isn't somebody who kind of defaults to texting as a means of communication, but we were just both so livid over this list that we're just uh, angrily texting each other. Can you believe Nat King Cole is missing from this list? Where is Judy Garland? Where is Celine Dion? Funny enough, I feel, I do feel like I've calmed down a little bit because I came to this realization that I think the biggest problem with the Rolling Stone list is that you can't just rank best singer of all time because you have to take into consideration the genre. You just can't do it. That's how you end up with Michael Jackson at spot 86. It, it just, it doesn't make sense to do it the way they did. And I think that <laughs> ultimately it, you're, you're never going to have a good list when you try to put all of the genres together. Anyway, I just, I had to get that off my chest. And related to Alta, how was week number one for everybody? The Platinum Perks Day was, it was a mixed bag. I don't feel like it was the best, but I feel like it was a, a good diamond gift once it finally started working. I will do a haul of that, I've decided, because I did a 1,000 points haul, and I feel like that's a, a kind of controversial thing to do. Most people prefer to redeem in 2,000 points increments. It makes sense, but I want to argue as to why a thousand points can also make sense. So we'll do a haul on this channel pretty soon with that. Anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's video. We are starting with Sunday, January 8th. And we have the Lancome Advanced Genifique Wrinkle and Dark Circle Eye Cream. What is this packaging? Has this been reformulated? I actually did have one of these products in an empties video, I think kind of a while back, but it, it didn't look like this. Something has changed. Hopefully it's just the packaging. Anyway, this is a product that also contains Bifida Ferment Lysate, which I just did a review of an entire collection about Bifida. I'll link it if you are interested a lot more affordable. Overall, I would have to say I liked it. It is an eye cream that does contain some alcohol. It does contain some uh, fragrance ingredients as well. And the catch for me with the Lancome Genifique line is I actually, I think I like the products, but something in them does not work for the portions of my face where I deal with acne. So I can't use their moisturizers, I can't use their serums, but I can use their eye products, and I can use anything that's in a wash off formula. That's just me though, that's allergies at the end of the day. So again, overall, I think it's a nice product. Uh, I don't know if you, if you necessarily need to feel that you need it, but I, I do like the ingredients. There's just also comparable K-Beauty products for much less. Have we 
talked about how that's actually one of the main reasons why this entire series kind of skews towards there's really only a small handful of products that I love in the end is because I do think that while this is a 50% off sale, uh, that can still be a high price point for what some of these products are, at least in 2023. That's a good segue into the Philosophy Hope in a Jar Water Cream Hyaluronic Glow Moisturizer. I don't think I tried this specific product, so as always, feel free to comment if you have, but I did do a test run with the entire Philosophy brand, and I have to tell you that overall, it was kind of forgettable. There were a few products I liked, but overall, I do feel like you can get comparable quality at this point in kind of more drugstore ranges as well as K-Beauty. We have some Tan Lux products, the Illuminating Self Tan Drops. Not really a self-tanning person. I know that some people do enjoy using products like this, and <laughs> as always, if you do, please feel free to comment. I've tried to use self-tanners, and it's been a while like at least a decade. So they may have gotten a lot better. I just remember really making a big mess. Oh, I made a mess, y'all. <laughs> Next up we have Kiehl's, the ultimate strength hand salve. That's interesting. I have not tried, I haven't tried a lot of hand creams. Some of you may remember in a not too old video at this point, I talked about how I'm kind of bad about using <laughs> hand products. Uh, but I know a lot of people like Kiehl's. The ingredients look pretty nice overall. It does have some eucalyptus oil in it, so I feel like I might not like the smell. I don't know. I don't know. It depends. I like eucalyptus at really small amounts, but I can definitely have too much eucalyptus oil. And then we have some Ulta Beauty Collection tools. This is kind of fascinating to me. Not only do they have a rose quartz facial roller that will be $10, a cold therapy stainless steel face roller, which will be $10. I like products like that. Just know that uh, for $10 each on these, it, that's not an exclusive sale. You can usually find a roller type of product for about $10. I believe Elf Cosmetics has one, Eco Tools, etc. So. I'm not sure why Ulta's prices are kind of high on these, but also they have both an advanced cleansing rotating facial cleansing brush. I've always been skeptical of the brushes that rotate. I just don't really know why they would do that. That seems, that seems extra harsh to me personally, but keep in mind I haven't tried those. And then we just have the standard Sonic facial cleansing brush, which I have tried something similar in that I've tried the Clarisonic. So again, this may be another alternative to the Clarisonic, but again, keep in mind that if you buy these, you will have to buy replacement heads down the road. I should also mention, Foreo products will be in week number three, and I am still a fan of the Butta Vibe. I still think that is a great option. I'm hoping for another 10X points on black-owned brands in February, so you can get that for is such a good price, and then also get the 10X points. That's pretty much my top recommendation. I'm so glad I did that last year. I love that tool. Monday, January 9th, we have the Strivectin TL Advanced Tightening Neck Cream. This is a product that I did try a long time ago. I actually got this little size right here in PR from Strivectin, and I do have to admit, I do like this product. You know what, with this one, it's gonna be most helpful if I do a swatch of it so you can kind of see the texture. So this is, it's a very interesting texture. It's kind of, uh, quite heavy in its sensation, but also emollient. It really feels like the ideal neck cream to me. Cause you know, the skin on your neck is a little more thin. You might want to give it extra moisture. And I do feel like you get that from this product. So I do like it. Again, keep in mind, you may not necessarily need a separate neck cream. It is definitely something that is optional, but if you are in the market for one, I do think Strivectin did a good job on this product. It does have really nice brightening ingredients in the formula as well. It does have some fragrance, but I would say it's light. I would say it's light fragrance in this. I should probably also say I do turn down a pretty large amount of PR. It's why I don't even have a, a, a PO box in my, my description below is because I don't want companies to send me products that I'm just gonna go, 
I don't really like this. So that's why you sometimes hear me say positive things about PR is because in this case, I already knew I liked this. So if they wanted to send me more, yes, please, I'll take it. Moving on to the Sunday Riley CEO Glow Vitamin C and Turmeric Facial Oil. This will be $20 in the sale. It's been a, a story for a while now that while Sunday Riley used to be a brand that you could not get on sale, now you can find them on sale a lot. Still, I will tell you all honestly, my experience with Sunday Riley was pretty mixed. I like certain products from them and I don't like others. This is a product that I haven't tried, so again, feel free to comment. Then we have some more eye gels. These are from Florence by Mills and this is the floating under the eyes variety. I've tried the swimming under the eyes, but not floating under the eyes. I guess she is continuing to expand her brand. Uh, I feel like overall Florence by Mills is okay as a brand, which kind of sum, sums up a lot of the celebrity brands for me. Do I feel like you need to put these on your list? Probably not, especially if you grabbed the Patchology or the Skin Iceland last week. Uh, but you know, it's an option here and I do like that it is fragrance and essential oil free. I think that is a smart direction for a brand that is, uh, you know, typically geared more towards kind of teenagers. It Cosmetics is back this week again with the Bye Bye Makeup 3-in-1 Makeup Melting Cleansing Balm. I was thinking about this 3-in-1 concept and how, you know, it, in my opinion, it rarely works. I think the only example of a product I can think of would be, I bought in the 10X points last year, I bought a Tula cleanser, mask that actually does do both of those things. This is supposed to be a mask, cleanser, and makeup removing balm. Uh, is it really anything all that different? It's really hard to say. I mean, realistically, you could leave any cleansing balm on your skin a little longer if you want to uh, feel the sensation of the oils in it more on your skin. Is it really going to do that much more? It's debatable. Tuesday, January 10th, we are starting with the Fur oil. This is another product that is supposed to be for a very specific region of your body, or really they say anywhere that you grow hair, but it is formulated to be especially good for your bikini area. Here's my question though. In a delicate area, why does it have so many essential oil ingredients? I mean, why? It just seems like those were really optional. When you look at the formula, it's grapeseed, jojoba oil as the first two ingredients. So, you know, realistically, realistically, that is the majority of this entire formula. With some added lemon oil, peppermint oil, lemongrass oil, tea tree, lavender, sage, camphor, and they're disclosing the limonene content of one of those or multiple essential oils. So it does seem that 2.5 ounces for that at $52 or 26 in the sale, it still seems kind of expensive, not necessarily special and potentially irritating. P potentially, I haven't tried it, so comment if you have, but I don't feel like you need to worry about, do you need to try that? Oops, I almost missed the Exuviance Age Reverse and Rebuild 5 Firming and Moisturizing Face Cream. I haven't tried this, although I did get that Exuviance sampler in the Platinum Perks Day. Let me go ahead and take a look at the ingredients for this. I feel like one thing I've noticed with the Exuviance brand is that they really like PHA. I also really like PHA. I think it is a great alternative to AHA. Um, but looking at the rest of the formula, I'm... I'm not too sold on this as a $96 cream. Again, if you do like it, grab it at 50% off, but I do feel like, I feel like it looks pretty expensive. Just my personal opinion, as always. You know the drill. Comment if you've tried these products. And of course, a lot of why I say that is because ultimately, you know, looking at ingredients doesn't tell you everything about the formulation. It could still come together and be a very nice product. Then we have the Dermablend Continuous Correction Tone Evening CC Cream SPF 50 Plus. I actually really wish I could try this. It sounds nice. I know Dermablend is a brand that's been around for a long time, but unfortunately, this does contain chemical filters, which my very sensitive and allergy prone skin reacts to. Such a bummer. 
such a bummer because an SPF 50 CC cream, that's exciting. Then we have Vici Select Products. And again, Vici is a brand. Vici is a brand that has always been on my to try list, but they've always been kind of lower. It's just a brand where I don't feel a ton of enthusiasm for trialing their products. And yet every time I look at them, I go, yeah, I would try them. There's a selection of three on this day, a hyaluronic acid product, a vitamin B3 product, and a vitamin C product. Sadly, haven't tried any of them. I just, I just haven't. We are moving on to Wednesday, January 11th, starting out with another celebrity brand, and this is Meaningful Beauty by Cindy Crawford, the Youth Activating Melon Serum. You all, I have to confess to you something. I looked at the ingredients for this formula, and this product retails for $76. Nope, $78. $78 when you click through. We're catching all of the inflation that has happened in the new year in this sale. Are you all noticing it? And I digress. I looked at the ingredients on this product, and I felt so underwhelmed. Just so massively underwhelmed. Again, you know, I talk so much about K-Beauty because this kind of formula right here, if you, if you look at this ingredients list and you want to try this, you can find something for $15 or less on K-Beauty sites that is practically the same concept. This formula is relying so heavily on melon, which I just... Why, why? Why? It reminds me of the I'm from pears in that we're all over here going, so pears are great for skin? Where did this come from? I'm over here going, melons are great for skin? Where did this come from? The Crepe Erase Advanced Body Repair Treatment Ultra, still haven't tried this, still think it's expensive, but I have heard a lot of people enjoy this. Finally, something that I can distantly talk about, the Elizabeth Arden Hyaluronic Acid Ceramide Capsules are in this sale. Now, I've tried all but the hyaluronic acid products. I've tried the vitamin C, the retinol, and the ceramide. This one is just the advanced ceramide. Uh, so I like these for travel. This is a, a whole concept that I've made sure I have a, a handful of for travel because let me tell you something. Eventually, if you travel with regular skincare bottles, something like this, eventually you are gonna have either a bottle break, you are going to have a lid somehow magically come loose and spill all over inside of your travel bag. Something like that is going to happen or all of the above. And it's probably gonna be your expensive product, speaking from my own personal experience. And that is why I have these as well as a few others. I have some from, who does the drugstore ones? I think it's number seven, right? Because if this does spill in your bag, it's not a big deal. They're just little capsules that you break open and they don't break themselves open. You actually have to twist them. I'll open this one to show you. So you twist and then you get the contents out. Now the ceramide one is pretty oily. I like it personally because I do have dry skin, but yeah, it's a pretty oily product. I guess not everybody does love that about it, but skin does tend to get more dry with age. And I would say Elizabeth Arden is a brand that is geared at a little bit of an older audience. Um, overall, I would say I really like the concept. Just one thing to keep in mind, speaking from experience is, Probably ask yourself how often you realistically travel. I thought I was gonna travel a whole lot more this past year and I didn't, so I haven't used very much of them. I might just start using them up now, even though I'm not traveling, just so I can finish them. But yeah, don't feel like you need to get something like this, especially if you, if you don't travel. I would really say, for traveling purposes, that is where this type of product shines. Urban Skin RX Pro Strength Resurfacing Vitamin C Cleansing Bar. Now, I did talk about this a while ago. I did have this, and yet I never actually tried it. I did take the pH of it and found that it was really quite high. I was concerned about this product because I saw a lot of uh, rather very negative reviews, kind of more on the scathing reviews side of things. And it made me a bit concerned, which is why I took the pH. I do feel that it is potentially very high, although this is new packaging. So it may be a new formula and maybe the pH is improved, but it didn't give me a lot of confidence in buying it. So I've never 
repurchased this product. Then we have the Copari Tripeptide Lip Cloud. So I did, I did receive this in PR as well, and I will say for as much as I like the Copari Lip Glossy, this is not my absolute favorite, but again, this has to do a lot with personal preference. This feels like a lip oil to me. I actually love applying this. It has this really, really thick wand to it that is fuzzy and just really fun to use, but I don't like that slippery feel, that oily feel, I should say. So you don't really like to tell you whether something is good or bad, because I really believe personal preference is huge. So ultimately what I would say is if you like Copari's Lip Glossy and or the Tower 28, you might not like this as much, but if you do tend to like lip oils, I think you will really like this. Let me go ahead and give you a quick swatch. Maybe that'll be a good way of better explaining this. It's not giving a lot of color, instead it just gives, honestly, a lot of nourishment. It's just not my favorite sensation on my lips. It almost tastes a little oily, I should say that also. Thursday, January 12th, I feel like I'm finally back in the swing of here's a bunch of these products. So, we have Paracone MD, and you know I've tried a lot from the Paracone MD brand. So, there are six options on this day, and I've tried, actually I've tried all of them. I've actually tried all of them. So let's start with the Cold Plasma. Cold Plasma is personally my absolute favorite Paracone MD collection. It is fragrance-free, it is rich in lipids, it contains copper peptide ingredients, as well as other peptides, just generally really nice formulas, but also really expensive, and I would not recommend you pay more than 50% off because you can always catch some kind of sale. So we have both the eye cream. The eye cream is nice. It's a light, lighter weight eye cream, surprisingly. And then we have the neck cream. Now I think this is showing as a reformulation, which is interesting. Even though I just said this is my favorite line from Paracone MD, I didn't really like the neck cream. It's Actually, here, let me show you the color. It, as, in contrast to the rest of the Paracone Cold Plasma, this is not blue, does not contain any copper peptide ingredients, and it's almost got kind of a, a stickiness to it. I don't know if that's the right word to describe this. Again, I don't hate it, but it is my least favorite from the Cold Plasma collection when I finished this. I, I wasn't planning on repurchasing it, but again, I'm considering it because now it's reformulated. Let me know if any of you have tried the reformulation. Then we have some products from the high potency line. Now the reason I don't like the high potency line as much is because it smells really strongly scented to my nose. It smells very citrus. But I guess if you love Paracone MD, this might be a nice daytime accompaniment to the Cold Plasma collection. This is kind of more for, I would say, dry skin. Again, Paracone is a brand for in general, more mature skin. In contrast to the neck cream I was just showing you, this one doesn't do that stringy thing. It just kind of sinks in. It, it feels nice. I just don't like the intensity of the smell. Same thing with the Nutritive Cleanser. And then the two eye serums, the High Potency Growth Factor, as well as the Essential FX Acyl Glutathione. Uh, I've tried both of these in many forms, and I think they're both they're both nice eye serums. For me, when it comes to expensive eye serums, I have one absolute favorite. You might know it if you've watched a lot of this channel. It is the Dr. Dennis Gross Retinol and Advanced Ferulic Eye Serums. It's too good. It's too good and it lasts forever. And then we have the Emerging Brands category, which is pretty interesting. We have that Loops brand in here. I haven't really felt motivated to buy the Loops brand, so I haven't. Comment if you have. We have from Dime the Eyelash Boost Serum. I gotta be honest with y'all, I was looking at the ingredients on this and it's, it's basically amino acids and a couple of peptide ingredients, which may be beneficial, but I just can't help but notice. When you look at this formula and you look at the Ordinary's Lash Serum formula, I'm sorry, but the Ordinary's looks so much better in my personal opinion. Euphoria pregame setting spray moisturizing skin serum. I think I'm gonna grab this. I hauled the Euphoria primer 
in uh, my last Ulta video, the Cyber Monday haul video. That's another one of those products that I just started using and I can't get myself to use anything else. So I wanna see what else the brand is capable of. So I think I am gonna grab that in this sale. We have the Lowly Beauty Plum Elixir. Y'all, this is actually an incredible oil. I think it does make sense that I like this oil so much. I've tried a pure plum oil in the past and I actually really liked it. Plum oil and my skin get along well, but not just that. This also has some of one of my absolute favorite ingredients, sea buckthorn, which is a lot of what gives it this color. That is a wonderful restorative oil. And for whatever reason, even though this brand does typically go kind of hard in the essential oil ingredients, this one doesn't have any essential oils aside from a little bit of rosemary extract, not the oil. I also really like the way Loli packages their products. I think Loli is a brand that I like what they're doing with sustainability. I just wish that I liked the formulas of more of their products. So I'll probably grab this too in the full size. I really like that oil. And I've always said indie brands have the best oils. This is very from Wildcat, the Yucca and Lactic Acid Liquid Exfoliator. Now I was looking at this and it looks very strong to me as somebody with sensitive skin, but I couldn't help but notice all the glowing reviews. I think it is, you know, another case of knowing what you need in your skincare routine. I just can't help but look at these ingredients and think that would be way too much for me. In fact, the reviews are saying it's a strong product. That's what I gather at least. We have the Vacation Classic Lotion SPF 30 Sunscreen. I got a sample of this, unfortunately. <sighs> again, my sensitive skin strikes again. I cannot use this because of the chemical, ing uh, chemical filter ingredients used in this product. And it's a shame because it does smell amazing. How many of you have tried the Vacation fragrance at this point? Oh, it smells so good. This smells like the fragrance, but with a little more of that classic sunscreen smell to it. It's very beachy smelling, very heavy on the coconut. It smells amazing. My hand is burning from swatching this. Why do I have to have allergies? Why? But it does mean you won't get any kind of white cast. So I think that if you can use chemical filters, and again, they're not bad. They're not bad ingredients. It's just that some people cannot use them. If you can use them, I think it's a nice product, just very strongly scented, which is a polarizing topic in skincare. And one more product on this day, and I'm so bummed out about this one, the Alma Beauty Trip and Smooth Primer. I can't tell you too much about this because they don't have the ingredients listed. In a skincare event, how are you gonna have a product that doesn't have the ingredients on the website? My mind is blown. Last product on this day is the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Face Moisturizer. I hesitate to tell you my thoughts on this, even though I've actually tried, I've tried this quite a lot in the past. I hesitate because I was looking at the reviews and I saw somebody say, used to be my favorite. I've always loved First Aid Beauty etc, etc. However, after nearly a year of using this product, I noticed with a purchase around Christmas that the moisturizer wasn't the same. It did not smell the same. It stings my face. It's a totally different texture on the skin. A look at the ingredients and comparing to an old bottle, they removed ceramides and replaced it with heavier, denser ingredients. I'm really perplexed. My little mini here does have the ceramide ingredients. The ingredients that are showing on the website show the ceramide ingredients. So I don't really know. That's just that review. If any of you do know more about this, feel free to comment. I'm not sure what's going on with First Aid Beauty. I know they're releasing a lot of new releases. That vitamin C serum was a big hit. Uh, a, a lot of their more recent products have been big hits, but it does seem that their older products might have uh, shifted around in formulas a bit. I, I don't know. Let's move along to Friday, January 13th, which is a very exciting day. This one is very exciting. We have the Lancome by Facile back. And even though I said I have to be, you know, careful with Lancome products, this is one of my absolute favorite products of all time. It is so effective for removing mascara, eyeliner, little glue bits that get stuck behind from false lashes, uh, for removing purple eyeshadows. It somehow takes them away better than anything else. It is just incredible for makeup removal. 
I have truly never found a makeup remover that is quite as efficient as Lancome's. Then we have the Murad Retinol Youth Renewal Eye Serum. I swear I have this somewhere, but I couldn't find it. This is a nice eye serum. I do think the retinol collection from Murad is well done. It's kind of the same story for me though as the uh, IT Cosmetics Retinol from week number one. I do wish you knew what level of retinol you're using just so you can monitor where you are in your retinol journey. But that said, I do think they're well done products. The Beekman Milk Drops Ceramide Serum. So it actually wasn't all that long ago that I tried this product. Now I do like it. I do think this is a great restorative product and yet, my, my strangeness with the entire Beekman brand, and I still haven't quite figured this out, is that if you read through the reviews, there are some people who say, uh, you know, this irritates my skin. It shouldn't, it should calm my skin, but it irritates my skin. And then you have other people saying, no, this is an incredible healing, restorative, ceramide rich serum. It's amazing. I believe it or not have had both experiences with this product as well as others from Beekman where sometimes it works for me and it's great when it does, but when it doesn't, it does burn my skin. In all fairness, this has also happened with the Coco Kind Barrier Serum. When that works for me, it's great. When it doesn't, ouch. And I haven't gotten to the bottom of it. I, I truly haven't figured out why this happens, but I have to be cautious with the Beekman brand as a whole on the immediate day after I've used a retinoid product. It's wild. Does, does, can anyone come up with a theory as to what's going on? I don't get it. And one more product on this day, the Tula Secret Solution Pro Glycolic 10% Resurfacing Treatment. I just caught something with this product. So uh, I'm hesitant anytime I see the word pro attached to something else because for example, pro retinol is such a common phrase in products. And typically when you see pro retinol, it means that product doesn't even have retinol at all. Right Elemis, right Josie Moran, quite a few brands doing that. This is pro-glycolic at 10%, but it does actually define the complex that that is supposed to mean. So it may not be a glycolic acid 10% toner. Instead, it may contain probiotics, prebiotics, hyaluronic acid, blueberry and snow mushroom, but not live cultures. I heard that Tula was dealing with a lawsuit for using the word probiotics. I don't know, I need to look into this more, but I'm, I'm curious about that because as you all know, I keep saying, postbiotics in all of my videos because you aren't actually getting live cultures in any of your skincare products. I don't know, honestly, I've had super mixed experiences with the Tula brand, super mixed. I actually love their acne care. I'm really mixed on everything else, I really am. Let me know if any of you have tried this. And the final day for week number two, Saturday, January 14th. So we have some Kylie skin cleansers. Does anyone care? I would really rather just skip past this. Do you all feel the same? I'm just not that into the whole Kardashian empire. Then we have, and I think this will be a very exciting one for quite a few people, the Peter Thomas Roth Water Drench Hyaluronic Cloud Cream Moisturizer. So this is a nice product. It does feel really great on your skin. This product really is interesting. It does, it almost feels like applying water to your skin. It's, it's really interesting. 27 in the sale. It's really not bad. A lot of ceramide ingredients. It is a fragrance free product. I do see why it's so popular. It is well done. And then in, in, in a very interesting contrast, we have the Dermalogica Age Smart Multivitamin Power Firm. This one has, I remember this from a while ago, this one has quite a silicone feel. I was looking at the ingredients again and I just can't help but feel like the silicone ingredients are a lot of why they say this is a blurring product, you know? And the cloud cream also does have a silicone base, which I think is part of what gives it its feel. But then it also goes on to have those ceramide and, and other ingredients. Whereas this one, I just feel like the full formula isn't super enticing to me personally. But again, I have met some Dermalogica super fans. <laughs> we'll say super fans. So comment if you do love that product. The PMD Personal Microderm Pro Microdermabrasion Tool is back in this sale. Since I've said it in every other product that is like this, keep in mind that if you do purchase this at 50% off, you will have to buy replacement tips that will probably not be 50% off. I don't think, I don't think I've ever seen a deal on the tips. Have any of you? Anyway, personally, I don't think you necessarily need a product like this, but 
That's just my opinion. I do know some people like it. I've also read through reviews and seen a lot of people say that they kind of stopped using it. It was, you know, exciting at the time and then it just kind of ended up a forgotten tool. So always remember with every tool, it's only effective if you use it. And the last product is this L'Occitane Immortel Overnight Reset Oil in Serum. How do you all feel about uh, names like oil and serum? I mean, it's pretty accurate looking at the ingredients. It does contain oils in a base of propane diol and glycerin. It's a beautiful bottle. I do have to admit the bottle is pretty, although K-Beauty also does have some beautiful packaging in some products. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look too enticing to me, and again, I don't personally like to buy from this brand because while they were once popular, now they have turned to the MLM route. Now before we end, the weekly wellness deals for January 8th to 14th are for body and personal care. We have truly, I see a lot of you feel the same towards that brand as I do, we have Moon. Isn't Moon, not Kylie Jenner's, who's the other Jenner y'all? Ken Kendall, Kendall, Kendall Jenner. I think this is her brand, maybe. Mega Babe, the brand that we've all received gifts with purchase from now. Sweet Spot Labs, same thing. We've all received gifts with purchase from that brand too. Bloom, Foria, Milk and Honey, and La Vanilla. But that's it. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about any of these products. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I will see you all next time.